Welcome back. This is lesson nine of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session eight. And in this lesson, we will talk about regularization and drop out as one of the possible ways of regularizing our neural network. Imagine we have an image that we want to classify as a t-shirt. And then in this image, we see that there is uh, this area, a circle with a logo inside it. And if we train our model for 10 epochs, it means that we will go over our data set 10 times. Our neural network will see this image 10 times. And when it sees it that many times, and if we do this, a neural network might recognize a pattern that every time we see a logo like this, it must be a t-shirt. A rule like that might not actually generalize because maybe we have a hoodie with this logo or a long sleeve or, I don't know, perhaps a hat with this logo. So if during test time we see a hat with this logo, neural network might think, okay, like I've seen this logo, must be a t-shirt which is not what we want to have. So we want neural network rather focus on things like sleeves, color, and things like this. So shapes more than specific details. So let's think how we can actually fight this. What if we take an image and before the neural network sees it, during training, we hide a part of the network. Let's say we have a black patch like that and we see this image multiple times, as many times as there are epochs. What if we use this patch to hide the part of an image? So one time it can hide this part, another time it can hide this part, and sometimes it can hide the actual label. And because we do this, every time a model sees this image, it sees a slightly different version of this image. So what if we could do something like this? This is the main idea behind dropout. So in dropout, we take input and in dropout, it's not really the image. We randomly hide a part of the input. We will see how dropout works, but I should add a remark here that Dropout doesn't really hide part of the image, but it applies this idea to inner layers and we'll see how. So let's see how it actually works. Again, the image. I'll draw a picture that you saw many times by now. So we take an image, then we have a bunch of convolutional layers. So I'll just use CNN here. And then what we get is vector representation. And the way convolutional layers work, the filters pick up some visual features of image like sleeves, and then it, this goes to some part of the vector. So let's say this part of the vector can have some values if there are sleeves on the image. This part is a color, maybe this goes here. And it also could be that if there is a circle somewhere on the image, it goes to a part of the vector representation here. And vector representation is a quite a large vector. So the dimensionality of this vector in our case is 2048. So it's quite a large vector. So there can be many things like maybe these parts here, they can go to a vector here. What happens next is we have a bunch of dense layers that turn this vector representation into our final prediction. And then final prediction is a uh, t-shirt, for example. So now let's think about this vector representation. So I will just remove this because we have seen this picture many times. So let me draw a simpler version of that. Let's say this is our vector representation. Well, let's assume it just has four values here. And this is our inner layer that has, well, let's say, three. So since it's a dense layer, every input is connected to every output. Everything is connected here. Now for dropout, we take a layer. So this is our dense layer. And we freeze a part of this layer. We say that this part here does not get updated. We run our iteration of a neural network training, and we say that at this iteration, we do not want to update this part of the layer. Right? So we say it's frozen. What happens is during training, these connections are gone. During this specific step of training, we only update this and this, but this one is frozen. Don't update. 
what we achieve by this effectively let's say if there is a part of vector representation that is responsible for a circle with a logo, then this neuron here will not get this information, will not see it because this connection is frozen. And then on the next iteration, we freeze this one and that one is not frozen. And on the next iteration, we freeze something else. So every time we freeze different part of the network, that's why it's almost the same as we hide a part of the input here. Because this is what effectively happens if we, let's say, go back from this layer to this one when this one is not updated. So maybe this input is not taken into account for this particular neuron, this one, and effectively part of the image is ignored. Could be this part, could be this part, could be this part. When we do this, we force the neural network to focus on a bigger picture. So we want it to focus on the shape and not on some details like a logo or this part here, which is not a part of the image. And if all the pictures of t-shirts are made on this background, then a neural network might think, okay, if I see this on a picture, then it must be a t-shirt. But if we randomly every time, randomly hide this part and hide this part and hide this part, then this eventually is the pattern we wanted to see, which is the shape. I'll clean it a little bit. So remember, we still have one more layer, the output layer. And when a part of a neural network is frozen, the output still gets all of layers. So we just don't update this part, but it doesn't mean that the output, the next layer, doesn't look at this. It actually does look at this. So let me just write this. This is not updated. That's the main idea behind dropout. We randomly freeze a part of a network and we can implement this for that. Let's take our model of version two that we had previously and we will have version three. And let me remind you that this is something we trained in the previous lesson. There we added one more layer between the vector representation and the output and we experimented with the size of this layer. And it seems like both 10 and 100 are equally good. In the previous experience I did, uh, 100 was actually better. So for now, I'll just go with 100. I don't think it makes much difference here, but I can just go with 100. And what I want to do is for this 100, for this part of the network here, I want to add dropout here to regularize this part. And here regularization, uh, so I, I don't think I mentioned that. By regularization, I mean we introduce something that uh, doesn't let our neural network overfit to some patterns that might not exist. This is an example. We have a logo. A neural network might uh, see a pattern that if there is a logo, it's a t-shirt. This pattern is not necessarily true and regularization is a way to avoid depending on this pattern when making the predictions. So we want to add that and let me just take the code we used previously. So this is our make model function. I'll copy it here and add another parameter. So I'll explain what this parameter is, but now we need to add dropout. And we will add dropout immediately after the inner layer. So we want to freeze a part of the inner layer. We'll just call it drop, here's layers dropout. And the parameter we have here in the dropout is like how much of this thing of inner we want to freeze. So this is called a drop rate. So we have have our vector representation, we have our inner layer, right? and we say that we want to freeze 50%. So this is this would be drop rate. So how much of the network we freeze. And each iteration is a different part of the layer. So it could be this part, this part, of course, uh, like it doesn't have to be consecutive. It can be this, 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 and this are frozen. So this is always random. And at the next iteration, it is different. So this is drop rate, how much of the network we freeze. And we control it by this parameter. Let's say default would be 0 0.5, meaning we freeze 50% of the input. And then we apply it to the output of this uh, inner layer. And then the final output, the predictions get in this output of dropout. So this is how it flows. So inner goes to dropout. The output of dropout goes to the final output. And the final output is what we get in the prediction. Let me modify this a little bit. I need to condense this picture a little bit. Now it's quite difficult to add anything here. 
this is still the same neural network. So now what I want to add here is another step, which will be a dropout. So it's dropout and output of this dropout, we call it drop. Uh, when we apply a dropout to our inner layer, we get the same dimensionality. So here, say if we have it 32 by 100, then after applying dropout, we get 32 by 100, and then the output is finally 32 by 10. So this is what I'll call version three. So we have a drop rate here, drop rate per meter. So let's see what should be the value that we use here. Let me take the code we have here, training the model. So on the previous step, we selected the size. So I'll use 100. So I'll just make it a bit smaller. And so it fits in the screen. Then we'll experiment with different drop uh, drop rates. So first we'll do without dropout. Zero means do not freeze any part of the network. Freeze 20%. Um, and then let's say 80% of the network. So we'll full print it. And then drop rate is this. Save the history. And now because we added regularization, 10 epochs will not be enough to train a model. Neural network will require more iterations to learn something because we're actively not letting network learn by freezing part of the model. So let's say 13. So now I will run it. Okay, it finished training, it took uh, 20 or even 30 minutes. So let's see what we have here. So I want to get the code for plotting. Okay, so this is what we have. Actually, it seems like towards the end, they all kind of overlap. This 80%, 0 0.8, means that we freeze almost the entire layer. So we have, this is frozen part, 80%, and this is not frozen. You can actually see that there is a warning it says it's very large dropout rate. Please make sure that you know what you're doing. So this is indeed a large rate. And actually I was expecting that it would be something like this. Yet it seems like at the end they meet. And we also see that there is this value here that is almost 85. What I'll do now is I'll enlarge it a little bit. So let's say between 78 and 86. This one is actually interesting. Uh, let me just plot it alone without other things. It seems this one, it just got quite lucky because it was just oscillating around this core and then it got lucky. So it achieved 85% accuracy and then immediately after that it dropped. So it's not clear if it's actually a good model or it was just pure luck. My gut feeling is it's just pure luck. Maybe let's also look at training accuracy and we see that around here it's actually quite high accuracy so even though we are regularizing even though we are freezing half of the layer still it manages to learn quite well on the training data set this one this is 85 percent accuracy on the validation so on training it's 96 so yeah i think it might be overfitting so this result over here is much more interesting than this one. So I am a bit suspicious about that peak here. For the rest, this 0 0.2 seems okay. So let me also take a look at this. So 0 0.2, first without train. So it gets a bit more than 84. Like after a few iterations, this is fourth, I think, and iteration. 11 is also quite good. Then it oscillates around 83%. And by the way, what was the previous best one? Yes, yeah, so it was actually less than 83. 84, yeah, so this one is actually 84. So we see that this model is actually better. Maybe it also was a bit lucky. But if we also look at the training accuracy, I think the model over here didn't significantly overfit yet. So this one seems okay. For this one, I trust it less than this one. 
So I would go with the model here. Uh, too bad we weren't doing any checkpointing, but yeah, it seems like I would go actually with parameter 0 0.2, because even though it's not super good, but it's also not suspicious. And in general, the, the performance I see here is quite okay. Okay, maybe let's look at no regularization at all, which uh, is interesting because without regularization last time it was worse. So now it got luckier. But also here we see that very fast goes to 100% accuracy, stays at 100%. Here again, the gap between train and validation maybe is even larger, more the same one. But I'm inclined to go with a 0.2 drop rate because it's not too large. It's reasonably good performance. And then we're adding this dropout to prevent from overfitting. Let me do final comparison between 0.0, .0 and 0.2. This would be 0.0. .0. 0.2. Yeah, they actually look similar. It seems if we look at the top values, they are slightly better. But again, maybe just because of luck. But I would still go with 0.2 because I know we are adding some regularization. So we are trying to fight overfitting there. So that's why I would go with this one rather than no regularization at all. So let's go with that one. This will be the value we are going to use. And in the next lesson, we will do a different approach to the regularization. Here, we freeze a part of a network in order to not let it overfit. But in the next lesson, we will look at a way of generating more data from existing data. And again, this way preventing the network from seeing the same image over and over again. So see you soon.